So we have PPI tomorrow and after the red hot CPI report on Tuesday, I told you guys not to get too ahead of yourselves. The market has recovered a bit since then. Um, you know, rate cuts for March have even risen back over 10% after approaching near zero after the report. And we have a PPI tomorrow, like I said. Let's talk about the general market and what to expect before PPI tomorrow. We have another relatively green day across the board. Most of the sectors in the S&P are green, except for a kind of technology. NASDAQ is technology as well, and in the semis, a bit of a break even slash red day. EVs are green though. We, we talk usually about EVs, about crypto, um, for being that kind of risk barometer or risk proxy. I want to talk about the VIX real quick. Let's take a look uh, at what happened here. We spiked uh, on that day, right? We spiked on the CPI day, but if what, if what happens here is that you put on your 200 period moving average or your 200 day moving average, you can see this is where we reject it, right? And I, and I repeat this over and over. Those of you who watch the channel every day know this. Um, you wanna buy stocks when the VIX is high. You wanna buy stocks when the VIX is hitting resistances. All these red arrow, whether it's any moving average, a Fibonacci level, a previous structure level, that's when you wanna buy stocks. CPI came into that 200 day moving average, but it also had a large upper wick. And you can see we had a green day, well, an inside bar red VIX day the next day, which was a green kind of recovery day for the market, right? And so we have all that space to play in down there. For now, um, you can see the S&P has recovered a bit since then, and we're still consolidating here. Again, I made the entire case for the bull market in 2024 in that video after CPI, so go check that one out. Let's move along here. I wanna talk about some stuff coming out of Europe. Industrial output for the Eurozone unexpectedly rises. So that's an economy that everyone's super bearish on. Now we're starting to see some positive news signaling that the recent slump may be coming to a close coming out of Europe. Then really surprisingly, UK inflation steady, right? This has been one of the worst um, inflated countries in the entire world, in the entire West, right? And the UK inflation was steady, raising the prospects of rate cuts. So the actual opposite news of what we heard from the US, right? Remain at 4%, define expectations of an increase and raising the possibility that the Bank of England can soon begin cutting interest rates. Remember, they're all going to work in tandem, right? We, usually the Fed leads, but you know, the Bank of England, the, the ECB, you see this, this, um, this, the good news coming out of Europe, they could start cutting and it's going to just start the domino effect, right? And so that's something. Rate cuts might be delayed, but that's no reason to panic. Markets reacted harshly to January inflation reading, but the economic backdrop remains positive. It's kind of a summary of what I tried to tell you guys in that Tuesday video. Some perspective is needed. January's figure was still down from December's 3.4 pace and the slowest reading since last June. And yes, the core inflation rate stripping out food and energy at 3.9% in January was unchanged from December. But one month in which core inflation failed to slow hardly seems cause for panic, right? Just six months earlier, it was at 4.7. So we've come down significantly. You see a chart of CPI, you can see how we've come down during this rate hiking cycle. And so, you know, it is working. It's just one month of kind of staying even, but they're stripping out food and energy. I showed you guys all the charts for commodities, for energies, and how they've been coming down as well for wheat, for corn. We looked at all the commodity, the food and energy, agricultural charts, right? And so, you know, that's kind of diluting the figures. The goods inflation continues to be negative. So this is good, right? Goods inflation continues to be negative. That's that's what you want to see, right? But the worry is in the services. It's it's mainly services. And we talked about seasonality in January. It's usually expected to see a services increase or inflation increase because of things like <clears throat> holiday shopping season, people moving, the, the, the New Year stuff, right? Um, start of tax season for all financial companies and things of that nature. But the point is that investors shouldn't treat a quick drop in rates as a foregone conclusion. And we talked in that video anyways, how you don't want that you can't be scared. Your, your end goal, your goal post cannot be the rate cuts. And like, that's when your life's gonna get better. And that's when it's time to invest. The best time, the absolute best time to be invested in the markets is from they, from when they stop raising rates, which they've already done, right? To when they cut rates, when they start cutting rates. And we've been in that, right? We've been in that market. This has been a raging bull. This has been a raging bull market. Um, it's not just Nvidia. We've talked about Nvidia, but it's all, it's all kinds of technology companies and companies across the board in raging bull markets, making all time highs, 
and you can see right there that chart continues to consolidate it continues to not find a lot of sellers smci has been on fire as well semiconductor the largest look at this thing i mean it's absolutely vertical we've talked about other sectors as well uh, jp you know we've seen the financials recently look at this you know we're in we're in a bull market as bull market can be over the last several years right and so you guys can just go through the sectors and, and see it for yourself okay on the earnings side of things there are you know a applied materials one of the most important companies in the world reporting reporting post today um you know stellantis is another one uh, we were just talking about all-time highs and, and rate you guys there's so many stocks at just all-time highs right and so stellantis the maker of of jeep um and maserati uh they're reporting the earnings today we're going to see what happens there there was a, a short i made today about uber with a six billion dollar buyback program in its first profitable year also at all-time highs lyft which reported earnings and is a much better valuation at six billion versus 160 billion um we talked about a potential gap and go and oh boy is it going right trading at one time price to sales versus uber trading at four times price to sales um and uber's focused more on diversification with the freight with the uber eats lyft's more focused on the drivers and just that part of the business model and so uh, some valuation to be had there two interesting stocks for me reporting earnings today are coinbase and DraftKings. so if you guys want leave a comment down below i'll do a quick earnings video for those similar to how i've done this week for on phase uh for paypal for robin hood uh etc you guys can go check those videos out just quick ones I'm really excited to do those for coinbase um okay retail sales shock to the downside so we did have some economic data today january sales shock to the downside and hey you know people are looking for a weak economy there's there's something retail sales uh you know uh, people shoppers were you know more chill compared to previous months in terms of, of retail shoppers in january and so it could be signs that the consumer is slowing down and you know the indices today tick up as more economic data pours in yields continue to slip following some dovish fed speech on wednesday so we talked about how there was fed speakers all week so it looks like they came out and talked dovishly which is you know dovishly means they're they're talking like they want to contract monetary policy like they want to cut rates right chances of a march rate cut edged back above 10 percent after being close to zero i told you this already um as chicago fed president goolsby reminded markets yesterday the fed's inflation goal is based on the core pce number and not cpi in addition some of the strong service cpi drivers we saw do not enter the pce calculation and are instead taken from the ppi so again this thing was skewed it was taking out energy and and food right and it was skewed because of services but services don't even enter pce which is what the fed is basing their decision on so you got to keep that in mind and look at this dovish speak right he also stated that inflation can be a bit higher and on track to two percent he does not support waiting until they get to two percent before they, they just need to see that they're on track so again we might be flat from december to january um but again 4.7 back then we've made tremendous progress and we're on the right track we don't need to reach the two percent they just like that we're not going backwards we're on the right track okay so you, you got to take this into consideration yields have responded and again the markets have responded retail sales shook to the downside uh initial job thing fell more than expected in the past week so the, the job you know this this remains strong the, the job market and so tomorrow's ppi keep an eye out for that one we had the philly bed the, the philly fed business outlook its first positive reading since 2023 so more positivity um uh, in uh, about the economy uh, which you know, should be bullish for markets but it's kind of that good news is bad news scenario so we'll see how that plays out bit of a green day for today just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that so ppi tomorrow there's there's a lot of you know there's some stocks that are trading um in, with their setups and there's no reason to to be selling right you trade your stops you secure your profits we'll see what happens with ppi tomorrow zoom out stick to the daily and the weekly time frames um you know watch the indices especially maybe the equal weighted indices as long as we remain above the key moving averages no reason to go bearish as you can see right there told you guys the most important charts for me this week were the mid caps and the small caps and after a boom you know a, a gap down on that cpi it ended up just being a retest of the the, the bullish pennant um breakout and we've morning started and now we're making higher highs on both the mid caps and the small caps a retest morning start and now we're trying to trade higher this one not making higher highs you want to see that follow through again weekly close for those two is probably the most important chart for me this week keep you guys updated thank you so much for watching see you guys in the next one hope we earn your thumbs up and uh, much love peace